Hello everyone, it is Joe here from Omnipoke, the channel that brings you everything Pokemon. Today we're going through a Gengar deck, as you can see here. I'm going to start off with a Pokemon line, talk a little bit about the whole deck and the strategy behind it, and then we'll get a game in there as well. So starting off we have three Gengar EX, the most important uh, Pokemon in, this, in the uh, deck. Let's move to it here. Uh, there it is, clicking the wrong thing. Um, 170 HP, Psychic type, pretty good for killing Mewtwo's and Lucario's if you ever run into those. But if you see down here, it's got that terrible weakness to Dark. That is really detrimental to the card. Yveltal can pick it up, uh, pick it off from the bench very easily. And uh, it has a nice resistance to fighting as well, which could come into play sometimes against Dom fans and stuff if they're trying to catch you up and wreck you. The reason why I say catch you up is because of his second attack, Dark Corridor. Uh, it's the main focus of the deck. You do 60 damage, poison your opponent, and then switch to your bench. So it's very similar to the Donphan uh, strategy in that you're hitting and switching, switching into something else. But this time we're doing a little bit more damage, base damage anyway, and we're also poisoning our opponent. He's also got a pretty nice attack uh, for one colorless energy, which just does three damage counters onto one of your opponent's Pokemon. It, been, it can be good for finishing stuff off if they've retreated to the bench and you can't get to it. Also, it has a two retreat cost that can be mitigated by one of the cards we do play in the deck, but I'll get onto that later. We're also playing one Mega Gengar EX, um, slightly more HP, but the main thing is he has Phantom Gate, which does uh, any one of your opponent's attacks on their entire field, not just their active Pokemon, for a Psychic Double Colorless, which can come into play very often. And it's really the only option we have against Pyro, other than hoping to do poison damage that racks up. So the Mega Gengar, only one slot in here. I don't want to play more than one of him because running into Pyro is fairly rare. So Next, I'm using um, Sigilyphs and Wobbuffets as our main walls or things to go into. Sigilyph, of course, has the safeguard ability, so it's safe from all EXs. Also, because we are running Psychic Energy, we could actually use his attack Psychic, which does 50 and 10 more for each um, energy attached to the defending. So that can be good if they're trying to power something up and they really have nothing for your Sigilyphs. You can actually start swinging with him. A nice run retreat cost as well, pretty easy to get out of there with him. And Wobbuffet as well, I'm absolutely in love with this card. 110 HP is very nice, almost the same HP as those Outragers. Pretty difficult to hit um, with non-EX Pokemon in general um, and his ability is Bide Barricade as long as this is in the active position each Pokemon in play in the hand and in the discard have no abilities except for psychic types so this is great for disrupting opponents um, very very good against Virizion Genesect I think this is one reason why Gengar may uh, arguably be better than Donphan I often think that it's uh, Donphan's the better deck, but against Virizion Genesect in particular, this Wobbuffet and Gengar um, comes into play very nicely because you can stop Red Signal, so Gengar is always pretty safe against Virizion Genesect unless they do play one Lysander or something like that, but that's not very common. He also has a pretty strong attack as well. Uh, Psychic Assault does 10 plus 10 more for each damage counter on your opponent's active. So if you've had to attach a Mystery Energy uh, to Wobbuffet to help it have free retreat, you can get a free Psychic Assault off if you have Dimension Valley on the field, which a lot of the time you will do. So instead of just doing the whole Gengar shenanigans, you can do a little bit more damage with the Wobbuffet. Um, it can be very useful, especially against Mega EXs, because with the poison adding up and stuff like that, Gengar won't be able to get the knockout, but Wobbuffet just might be able to. So that's a good thing to consider. Um, in terms of Pokemon, a lot of people may want to decide to use different things to go into. There's a lot of uh, different uh, techs you can use in here. You can use the Outrages, Zekrom, Kiram, and even Reshiram uh, for different type coverage against Virizion Genesect, Domphan, and Yveltal. Especially because Yveltal is super effective against Gengar. You may want to throw a couple of those in here. I'm not doing so because I'm skipping straight to the energy here. We're playing 12, but as you can see, no DC is in the deck. Because I'm using a Dimension Valley build, I don't feel, feel like um, the DC is important because we just cut off the extra DC and just use two Psychics to attack with our Gengar. It also means that the Sigilyph and Wobbuffet can attack fairly freely, which is very nice. 
So yeah, there's basically two ways of building the deck. You can pl play um, Verbank City Gym as your stadium and use DCEs, or you can do what I'm doing at the moment, which is Dimension Valley, and then just straight Psychic Energies and Mystery Energies. For those who don't know, Mystery Energy uh, gives Psychic Pokemon two less retreat. So Wobbuffet, Siglyphs, and Gengars, all of the bunch, can retreat freely, which is very cool. Moving on to the trainers here. Uh, I'll actually go into the big screen. We've got the computer search just to find anything we need. Two bicycles to help us milling through the deck pretty nicely. An escape rope to force your opponent out of the active. You can also move one of our Wobbuffets or Sigilyphs if we don't have either a Mr. Energy or a Floatstone. Uh, we have three substitute robot. Now this is another thing you're commonly going to be rushing into. Um, it's basically a 30 HP colorless basic Pokemon that cannot retreat but your opponent doesn't take a prize if they knock it out. So that can be very frustrating for the opponent. It gives you an extra turn or two to get uh, Dark Corridors off for extra damage and knockouts and stuff like that. Very good. One way you can actually get out of the sub-robot is using that escape rope that we play. We also play one switch for that exact reason, um, but also its utility with the Wobbuffet and the Sigilyph. We're playing one Startling Megaphone for Genesex G Booster. We want to get rid of that. Um, for Garbodor sometimes if you want your Siglyphs to be effective. It's just a good versatile card. Next we're playing two Ultra Ball and two VS Seekers. Both good in their own right, pretty um, standard cards in most decks. We don't play many Ultra Ball just because you draw into these uh, pretty easily and oftentimes you're going to be wanting, wanting to use a sub robot anyway. So Ultra Ball can't really help us there. The VS Seeker, very important in this deck because we play one Lysander's Trump card in here. This really helps us recycle our robots and our escape rope and other stuff like that, all of our tools as well. So Trump card can be very, very strong in this deck. We also play one normal Lysander, also very strong, um, just capturing what we need when we need it. And obviously with two VS Seeker, we have the option to use it three times or up to three times uh, if we draw the VS Seekers at the right times and the Lysander's already been used or discarded. We also play the one Colrus, not strong early on, but great in the late game. I feel like VS Seekers played in almost all decks and stuff like Colrus counts are reduced to just one because it's so strong in the late game, but it means we don't draw into it early uh, as much as we would do. Then we're just playing the standard 4-4 N and Juniper count. We're also playing three Skylar because as you can see we have a low count but a whole bunch of different tools and uh, trainers so Skylar very very versatile in here we're playing a full complement of four dimension valley it's very important to use this uh, or always have this online it means that Gengar doesn't have to attach three energy because that really does suck if he does end up getting Lysandered two energy makes it a bit better it helps you get more than one Gengar on your field ready to attack so if one is unfortunately uh, picked off you have another one where raring to go so Dimension Valley, absolutely awesome. Uh, Psychic Pokemon's attacks do one colorless less. That's fantastic. Also, as I said, Sigilyph and Wobbuffet can both take advantage of that. So, onto the tools. We're playing one Spirit Link Gengar because um, we can just Skylar it out, and you don't really want it as dead draw, but it's great if you can pull off the Mega for the Pyro matchup. We're playing three Muscle Band and three Floatstone. Muscle Band is very important in the deck. It means that Gengar can actually hit. 90 going into their turn with the poison the 10 from poison So you're pretty much doing the same amount you would do with a dimension valley build by putting on those muscle bands It is a bit of an issue when you're going up against um, Virgin you don't hit those magic numbers as nicely, but that's where night attack can come in and do some good work there for us also against steel decks that use steel shelter We're doing very very little to those decks Um Hopefully though they don't become all too popular because they have resistance on us and when they have steel shelters in play, the poison doesn't rack up. However, um, it's just a risk we have to take. Everything's got bad matchups. So that is the deck that I've gone with so far. Let's get into a battle. As I said, there are different ways of customizing this deck. Um, hang on, let me just save this. Save it up. I must have made some changes beforehand. And we're going to go straight into a battle here. Let's go on a random battle. And use our Gengar. 
Gengar recently as well, it's been updated so that Sigilyph uh, can actually be retreated into via Gengar. So that's good, and that's why I've chosen to do the video now. So we're going to flip a coin straight away. We're against Kiwi, or Kiwil, I should say. And we get a heads and a mulligan from us. It looks like he's playing a grass based deck. It could be Frisian Genesect, more than likely. But you never know these days. It could be some sort of wacky Flareon deck that uses Leafeons. I'm one of those types of people that <laughs> keeps people guessing and does stuff like that. We're going to start very nicely with a Wobbuffet and a Gengar. And it is indeed Frisian Genesect. Good that we have a Wobbuffet on our side straight away, so he's not going to be able to red signal us throughout the game hopefully because we'll have Wobbuffets streaming all game. I'm just going to attach the Floatstone and the Energy and pass the turn. Seeing as though he started Genesect I didn't want to end him straight away because he may struggle to get Everizion this turn and we're in no rush to really search for anything. Our opponent goes for the Ultra Ball getting rid of a Letter and a Skylar to actually find that Verizion EX. He puts a Deoxys down as well that will come into play because it means that he can do good math with a Wobbuffet. He puts down a Dimension Valley, which is very interesting, and he puts down uh, he does a Sycamore and attaches a Grass to the Verizion EX. Seeing that Dimension Valley from him is very very interesting. Um, so he could even be playing Mew EX to make cheaper um, Emerald Slashes. It means that Mew can Emerald Slash for just one Grass Energy and he can use Megalo Cannon for just two Grass Energy. Kind of an inconsistent deck, but we'll see how it does against us. Uh, fortunately, we had the one copy of the Megaphone straight in our hand, so we'll get rid of that G-Booster right away, and we can go for that end now. Refresh our hand and shuffle his up as well. Don't really draw anything good, didn't get into our uh, Muscle Band, unfortunately, there. But because he hasn't got energy on that Genesect, as of yet, we can actually get some poison damage going on and put him up to 100 HP left with that poison. Our opponent goes with a VS Seeker for that Skylar. Most likely going to find himself a switch here of some sort. He actually goes for the energy switch, which is interesting. He gets a Mew down, attaches to the Genesect. Uh, because we have our Wobbuffet in the active, it didn't actually um, stop the poison, which is cool. Uh, he then goes into the Mew, and he decides to use um, Emerald Slash, which does super effective damage to the Wobbuffet for the knockout, actually. But here with Gengar, we're actually being able, going to be able to take two prizes, which is pretty nice. I don't really know why he did that, unless he doesn't play switches. I feel like it would have been safer just to go into the Verizion. It's kind of an aggressive move on our opponent's part. We have a couple of options that we could go for here. I feel like VS Seeking just for an N could be the best way to go. I am going to do that because I want more than just Skylaring for an Ultra Ball. I feel that's pretty weak. We are able to get into a Substitute Robot, which is nice. And we're just going to Dark Corridor once again for the 120 Knockout and send up our Sub Robot as fodder for next turn. At the moment, he's only got two energy in play with on that Genesect that's already damaged, so we're in a pretty good spot here. Unfortunately, we didn't find a Wobbuffet, so we could be caught unawares with a Red Signal and if he's able to find a Shadow Triad, which he isn't because he's just end us, um, he may have even been able to G-Booster us that turn, but as it stands, he just has the N, attaches a normal energy and kills the sub robot, which I'm absolutely fine with. We're going straight into that Gengar. I'm going to Skylar now so that we can ensure ourselves a Wobbuffet because they are, as I say, the most important thing against this sort of deck. I can happily discard that Dimension Valley knowing that he plays them as well. I'm also going to get rid of the sub-robot. We'll find ourselves a Wobbuffet. And I may... 
I'm just going to slap another energy onto the other Gengar and go for that Dark Corridor. Only 60 damage, but it's starting to rack up now, that Genesect. 40 away from being knocked out. And that's the only threatening Pokemon on his side of the field right now. Our opponent decides to Ultra Ball, a nice gold Ultra Ball. Finds himself a second Genesect DX. He puts down a Plasma onto the Virizion and goes for a Sycamore. So our opponent noticing that he's going to need a Virizion um, to stack up a Genesect later while we're going to be able to get a knockout this turn. We're able to find a Mystery Energy to go onto our other Gengar. I'm not just going to Colrus here for four. Not all that strong, but we actually find exactly what we need with these two Wobbuffets and a Juniper for next turn as well. So that's fantastic. We can just go for a Dark Corridor here. And we're looking to be in a really strong position. Two prizes away from victory. Our opponent's going to be forced to use Virizion this turn unless he finds another Mew. But if he uses Mew, we could just win with Gengar. So he has to use his Virizion here. And we'll see what we can do. If we're not end this turn, we could use that Escape Rope to great effect this turn. Or the turn when it comes back to us. He does indeed go for that N. And then a bicycle for an extra card. And just hits us for 50. We draw into a muscle band starting off here. I'll put it on the Gengar. Could go for the N and just hope, or I could attach a Psychic and do the big 10 damage. I'm going to go for the end here. Hope for the best. Uh, we don't find anything too good. I can slap down another, another substitute robot. And just wait for him to knock us out. I don't mind how many Genesects he's able to stack up at this point with Emerald Slash. Because two prizes and we've won the game. So I'm just going to hold on to the Psychic Energy and pass it over. So as you can see, one great thing about Gengar, especially in this matchup, I'm really happy that we found a Risen Genesect player because the ability of Wobbuffet really is disruptive for this matchup, which would otherwise be very strong for them. And uh, Dom fan players will know that Risen Genesect has a very good chance of beating most Dom fan players because they can uh, use Red Signal so often in the game. So this is one way Gengar stands out and has a slightly better matchup if you use the Wobbuffet version like I am. Or a highly focused Wobbuffet version. You could still play Dragons, the Outragers, and play like three Wobbuffet or something. So you got to tinker around with it. I personally have gone with the Muscle Band and Dimension Valley combo, like I said earlier, for um, less energy that you have to attach to Gengar, especially because... Um, enhanced hammers are around. I'd rather not play more than four special energy in my deck because you could uh, fall prey to a heavy hammer deck. I'm going to go for a computer search here so that we can find what are we going to look for? I don't even know here. I'm just going to go for a Juniper. Seems like the best bet. And we're 90 HP from victory. But he's only two prizes away. And we weren't able to get a uh, Wobbuffet because they're all dead. <laughs> so it's a difficult decision here what to do. Maybe we should have ended him there and just hoped that he couldn't have drawn a Plasma Energy or a way of finding one. But he's only used one so far, so he's conserving them quite nicely. I could also go for the Escape Rope and force him to move his Virizion, but it already has the energy on it, so that wouldn't really serve too much of a good purpose. So we're just going to... I feel like we're in a really tough spot now. That's really not good for us. 
we're just going to go into the sub robot and hope he doesn't have a plasma here. It's more than likely that he does, so we've ended up losing. Uh, if he does play it, there it is. So yeah, unfortunately Gengar did end up dying to a plasma. I sort of took my eye off the ball there. I didn't realize how close he actually was to um, beating us in return. The Wobbuffets stacked up, I guess, the deaths because of that Deoxys that he had. It was so easy for him to knock out the Wobbuffets. Um, but I feel like maybe if I had played differently and focused more on what I could have got with that computer search, we could have done better there. I'm trying to think now um, what we could have done. Probably just N. Nning would have put us in a better position. Put him down to two cards and three when he drew. Um, but other than that, there's the Gengar deck. Maybe not piloted perfectly. I'm still tinkering around with it, as I say. I'm trying to get a um, good feel of all the decks right now. So I'm no, no expert on Gengar. Potentially a misplay at the end there that cost us the game. But nonetheless, um, it is a strong deck. I'll give you a little preview of that list that I've used for the last battle once more and yeah there it is guys so I hope you enjoyed and see you next time